Greetings, everyone. It's great to be with you again. These opportunities to learn together are much appreciated. Thank you for joining us. Our presentation today is entitled Work and Worship, Central Activities and Concepts of the Rosicrucians. For the Rosicrucians are very practical and it's very important to understand something fully, to have firsthand experience of it. So in that regard, Let's undertake an experience in the work of worship by ascending to the heights of the celestial sanctum and we'll apply both work and worship on the ascent and descent. So prepare yourselves now for meditation. We'll follow the booklet, the Rosicrucians Libra 777. Later in the chat, Karen will paste in there for you some resources, including a reference for it. Just take some time to let go of the cares of the day. And when you're ready, close your eyes, maybe seated or lying down as you wish to be situated. And with your eyes closed, I suggest take some deep neutral breaths, neither holding the inhalation nor holding the exhalation. Just enjoy the gentle rhythm of the breath. A profoundly simple act breathing, but it's always there to help calm us one of the wonderful workings and wisdom of the holy temple, the body, a microcosm of the macrocosm. Let us never underestimate the value of our breathing, not only for the survival of the holy temple and its manifestation on this earth plane, but also for its capacity to relax us. Because particularly as we breathe gently in a relaxed way, We'll find particularly when we extend our exhalation that the great vagus nerve in the body is activated, running from the lower brain to below the gut. And that relaxation response also triggers healing within us. To heal, we need to be relaxed. Just enjoy the gentle rhythm of the breath before we begin our ascent to the heights of the celestial sanctum. Later, we'll talk in more depth what Rosicrucians mean by work and worship, partly mean what's understood in the general English language and partly our specialized terms in the Rosicrucian mystical tradition. Just enjoy the gentle rhythm of the breath. And if you're comfortable for a while, just let go of where you are and who you are. View this as a time to have a mini retreat. Each day we're sort of roughed up, the challenges, the stresses of the day. Use this as a time to be re-energized, be soothed. We can use our breath throughout the day to soothe us and re-energize us. Not only when we do formal periods of meditation like right now, but throughout the day and night. all part of the wisdom of the holy temple and the human being created in the image of God, the divine, being a co-creator and having parallel faculties to create as the creator does. All these things are built into us to be profoundly meaningful for our realization. Just continue to take deep neutral breaths if it's comfortable for you. Later you can go to your regular pace. I think you'll find as you take those deeper neutral breaths that something wonderful starts to happen. You start to feel a enriching tingling in the tips of your fingers and the tips of your toes and then circulating throughout your body. That's the vital life force. It's positive essence is a or aspect of the cosmic essence it has a wonderful healing rejuvenating effect. As we still ourselves, we become more aware of the flow of the vital life force in our body. But also, as we take be more observant, it actually charges it up. So there's a double action there in our realization. Now we'll undertake the work of the Rosicrucian order and work. I'll go in more detail what's meant by that word, but it means engaged activity or studying natural and spiritual laws that come into self-mastery. 
It means using our full faculties to learn, to move from gathering information to assessing it as knowledge and coming into its wise application. In other words, wisdom. To begin our ascent, let us say an invocation and prayer together. May the divine essence of the cosmic infuse my being and cleanse me of all impurities of mind and body. May, that I may enter the celestial sanctum and attune in pureness and in worthiness. So mote it be. Now inwardly, let us begin to work using our imagination and our psychic capacity to visualize ourselves rising up from the room where we are, up above the dwelling and home. Enjoy the ascent as we rise and work together, rising into the cosmic. And by the cosmic, the Rosicrucians mean the universal intelligence back of the cosmos and all natural and spiritual laws that we come into knowledge of as we grow in maturity as a human being in self-mastery. And keep rising up over the neighborhood where you dwell. See the streets and people below, radiate your love and well-being to them. And keep rising up over the city or geographic area, and then rise up even higher and see the weather systems. If it's cloudy where you are, you can be now up in the beautiful sunlight, symbolic of the great interior sun within us always shining for us and keep rising up and you may see below you the province or state where you dwell and you maybe see the, the mountains and the hills or the rivers and water systems, the lakes or the oceans or deserts, various landforms applicable to your area and keep rising up and see now the great nation and country where you dwell. So your opportunity to be incarnated and learn and grow at this locality. See all the system and order below as you rise up and see the continent and then the heaven sphere and then the entirety of the oblate spheroid or sphere of the earth. See the earth gently revolving about its north south poles or axis. It's a beautiful blue jewel. See the oceans and landforms the great weather system, some of them spiraling. And then look up from the earth and see the entirety of the solar system, the great fiery ball of the sun, the huge planet of Jupiter, beautiful planet an intriguing shape with its rings of Saturn and the smaller planets such as Venus, Mars and Mercury and feel spiritual and psychic effect from them and radiate back your love and well-being to the earth and all sentient beings around you. Seeing the great system and order of the elliptical orbits, just as the earth rotates about its axis and the moon below about the earth, we see the earth going about the sun as well as the other planets, following various laws, some of them established by traditional Rosicrucians such as Sir Isaac Newton. And now let us look up and rise up faster and faster again, far faster than the speed of light. Here's the opportunity to use the work of, of our order to rise up, use great inner spiritual force. Call on the divine within to do this with ease. For as we rise up by the law of correspondence, we'll also move deeper and deeper within ourselves and be in greater contact with the God within our true source in nature. And as you zoom past at great speed, see other stars, some smaller than the sun, some larger. See various stellar phenomena such as pulsars and quasars. Black holes that help keep your universe in balance. The supernovas with a great tremendous burst of light. Keep rising up, see nebulae, interstellar gases. Keep going faster and faster and sense the great arm of the Milky Way galaxy. It's great spiral form, the galaxy that we dwell in and go right out of the Milky Way galaxy and look back at the great arm where we dwell. 
a great home, this galaxy, and look up and see other stars and myriad phenomena, and sense the great harmony of the spheres, the music of the cosmos spoken since ancient times by philosophers and mystics. And think of the great cosmic keyboard of the Rosicrucians, all vibrations rising in all phenomena and use your inner spiritual faculties and psychic nature to sense not only what you can take in with the five physical senses, but what you can take in through the psychic faculties. Sense the great sea of vibrations that you're in, in the midst of and the wonderful harmony and music it produces that inspired artists and musics back on earth work to imitate in their works to suggest this experience to us and keep rising up in the cosmic way beyond the speed of light. Keep accelerating faster and faster. And now see other galaxies, some spiraling like the Milky Way galaxy and some in other shapes and continue to take in the great system and order that's without us and within us. And see now not only individual galaxies and stars, but also what astronomers and astrophysicists call clusters of galaxies, see many galaxies at once, all part of the great beauty system in order of the cosmos, and continue to rise up and increasingly sense the vastness of the universe as we head to our celestial sanctum at the center of the cosmos. Now we're going so fast that we can only not only see one cluster of galaxies, but many, many clusters of many individual galaxies and gradually start to sense that these clusters of galaxies are what in astrophysicists and astronomers call super clusters that are made up of many, many clusters of galaxies, each cluster having within it many, many galaxies. And we start to sense all the more the fastness of the universe, which suggests the tremendous vastness that's within us through moving from the finite plane into the infinite plane as we tune with the God within. Since now many superclusters of galaxies revolving about a great cosmic axis of the universe. Work now to take in the cosmos of the universe as a whole now. See the great system and order as things move around a great cosmic axis spoken of by mystics and philosophers since ancient times. Sense this stupendous motion, just like the earth revolves about its axis and the moon around the earth and the planets around the sun and our great spiraling galaxy, our home, the Milky Way galaxy moves around. So too, the universe itself revolves, the super clusters of galaxies moving around it and home in faster and faster in that cosmic axis that mirrors the great axis that is a spine in our body. And zoom in on the center point or midpoint of that great cosmic axis when you reach it, slow up and dwell for a while, taking in the stupendous motion all around the center of your being in the center of the cosmos, the tremendous system and order, all natural and spiritual laws are operating around you and within you. And as described in the book, Lieber 777, based on the wonderful harmony and order of the symbolic sacred number seven, for on the square of the four, foundation is braced the triangle in its perfection as two polarities come together at a third point to form a manifestation, which we'll talk about in this, just like the square based pyramid forms in association with seven. Now as described in Lieber 777, more prized now of its symbolism, picture some inspiring place in nature that's special to you or just take in the cosmos around you. Maybe there's some particular space, place you like to go on holidays that's particularly inspiring to meditate by the seashore or by a lake shore. And as you see the waves come in, they remind you the great vibrations of the cosmos and the cosmic keyboard, or maybe a sacred grove, or maybe a meadow, or maybe a high on a mountain point or hill. And its expansive view helps attune us within, allowing the outer self sense the great high view, which is suggestive of cosmic consciousness or some other inspiring place in nature. Or you may prefer some inspiring work of architecture, a built form, 
such as Muslims' mosque or Jews' synagogue or Sikhs' gurdwara, Christians' church or temple or a Hindu mandir or a Buddhist prayer, <coughs> prayer hall or stupa and so forth. Fill in your sacred place now, your celestial sanctum. Fill it with sights and sounds. You may wish to smell incense or wonderful aromas there to help attune you with the cosmic, just as the incense rises up and exhilarates us to rise up into the cosmic, just as like we rose from the earth plane up now, from the finite plane into the infinite plane to attune with the cosmic at the heights of the celestial sanctum. There may be beautiful symbolism, such as stained glass windows around you depicting natural and spiritual laws. Sense to all the persons on our conference call with us today, attuning with the cosmic and like mind, but also officers of our order, the Imperator, Chief Executive Officer may be conducting a special ritual now. And sense the presence of other mystics today and from time immemorial and the cosmic masters communing at the heights of the celestial sanctum and the one soul. When you filled it in and feel the exhilaration of our ascent and being there, dwell in profound stillness. Enjoy what the Rosicrucians refer to as peace profound as we're quiet together for a while. Increasingly, you've done this work. Now let us worship the inner sanctum of our heart at the center of the cosmos, at the center of our being in a profound act of work and worship. Let us be still together. So we increasingly worship and surrender to the divine within. If you find your mind wandering, just lovingly and gently, return it back to the gentle rhythm of your breath, the still center of your being. Just feel whatever there is to feel. Meditation is a profound act of non-avoidance. Certain things arise, take note of them, but then return back to your still center, the gentle rhythm of your breath. There's many reasons to rise to the heights of the celestial sanctum. But a general overarching reason is always for our general enlightenment, our increasing attunement with the cosmic. Not only for now in the meditation period, but throughout our day as an increasing way of living, increasing way of evolvement for ourselves and humanity. For as each of us rises into the cosmic, so we help draw others at all times. Other reasons to rise into the heights of the celestial sanctum is to heal ourselves, to help make ourselves whole, to call on all our faculties, to work together in a coordinated way. We can also rise into the cosmic for some challenging task or duty we need to do. It'll strengthen us, draw us more into the spirit of knighthood to discharge our duties and do what we need to do for the welfare of all. Another reason to rise up into the heights of the celestial sanctum is to undertake various spiritual operations and special exercises that we're taught on a weekly basis in our monographs, the highly comprehensive teachings of the Rosicrucians, such as visualizing the special technique of visualization to draw things into our lives for our well being, that of others. It may be to attune with loved ones that have passed through transition and can be with them again. 
It may be to get an answer to a particular important life question that our outer nature can't readily solve by consulting encyclopedias or other sources. Another of the many special reasons to ascend to the heights of the celestial sanctum only for our general enlightenment is to engage in the work of the silent council in conjunction with the council of Solus of the Grand Lodge, San Jose, California, the Rosicrucians. Let's undertake this latter spiritual operation for the further work and worship of our order. At this time, let us radiate love and well-being to all those who have petitioned our Grand Lodge for guidance, healing, and special support in time of need. Just as you rose up into the cosmic, and these great inner spiritual force, call on that again to radiate from the center of your being, love and well-being, draw on all the healing forces of nature to flow out from deep within you. Not as an act of the outer nature, but just by the surrender of being cosmic attunement with our divine within, the divine within will let that energy flow out from us to all those who petition the Grand Lodge for healing. And also all those who have petitioned affiliate bodies of the Rosicrucian Order and Mark that you may participate in. And all those you know who are in need in your family and your friends, those you've heard about in the news and others. And then finally, let us radiate love and well being to all sentient beings throughout the cosmos all part of the great one soul and the universal intelligence back of the cosmos. Just let the love and well-being flow now. Enjoy the exhilaration of its flow, just like you enjoyed the exhilaration rising up to the heights of the celestial sanctum and going deep within yourself to commune with your true nature, the divine within. Just let the love and well-being flow. Exert your inner spiritual strength and imagination to do it. I think you'll find the tingling sensation increases in the holy temple of the body. For as we give, so we receive, even without intending. These periods of metaphysical aid have a wonderful tonic effect for all those that we send to or are receptive, but also for ourselves. Just let the love and well being continue to flow where you dwell, the deep center of your being. Let your true nature, the divine in, do this work and worship. I think you'll find at a certain point the flow of the energy of the love and well-being will increase and move even more quickly, often at a tremendous rate, and you know you're reaching those in need. And at a certain point, too, I think you'll find you need to make no conscious effort for the energy to flow. And when that happens, just dwell the divine within, and commune with the cosmic. Increasingly realize the Consciousness of the cosmic, who our Rosicrucians refer to as cosmic consciousness, our birthright. Consciousness that guides all the forms of consciousness within us, from our objective consciousness to our subjective consciousness, to our subconscious and the overarching cosmic mind. Continue to let the love and well being flow, applying the law of cosmic attunement, the law of service.
Just continue to dwell at the center of your being. At one with the one. Soon we'll formally close this period of metaphysical aid working in this as a silent council in conjunction with the Council of Souls, but we'll continue our meditation period a while longer. Now to formally close this period of sending of metaphysical aid, let us say together, if it pleases the cosmic, it is done, so mote it be. And let us continue a while longer to dwell in cosmic attunement at the heights of the celestial sanctum. Enjoying the deep stillness, its great enrichment and ennoblement for our whole nature. Soon we'll begin our descent from the heights of the celestial sanctum. Now with a prayer of gratitude for this opportunity to be of service and fulfill our birthright in tuning with the cosmic, let us begin our descent from the heights of the celestial sanctum, the center of the cosmos. As we go with great speed, past the super clusters of galaxies, revolving about the great cosmic axis. See the great harmony and order of it all, sense the universal intelligence back of it, that we're part of and one with. As we zoom past the super clusters of galaxies, let's enter the super cluster, which is our home and see the many clusters of galaxies. Zoom in on the particular cluster where our Milky Way galaxy is, and enter it into that, that cluster. See all the wonderful shapes of the different galaxies, the myriads, stellar phenomena, the stars and quasars and pulsars and binary stars, black holes back of them, and see in the distance the beautiful spiraling shape and form of the Milky Way galaxy. Past many, many stars and nebula. Enjoy the acceleration of the descent and go into the great arm where we dwell and enter within the Milky Way galaxy, past nebula and pulsars and quasars, various stars bigger and smaller than our sun, and see way in the distance our solar system and its beautiful system of order of the great elliptical orbits. See the great fiery ball of the sun emblematic of the great invisible sun within us in our divine nature. And see the temple of the earth, the beautiful blue jewel and zoom in on it and the particular hemisphere where you dwell and the continent where you dwell and the country or great nation where you dwell and then the province or state and then the city or geographic area. And let us say together, may the God of my heart sanctify this attunement of self with the celestial sanctum, so mote it be. And let us continue to ascend further down to our neighborhood and the home where we dwell and back into the room where we are. Before we open our eyes, let us sense too how we've been remade rejuvenated and regenerated this, through this attunement with the God within, the divine within, our true nature. And as we attune with the cosmic, so that cosmic consciousness will express through our objective consciousness, our subjective consciousness, our subconscious, and the overarching cosmic consciousness. You may wish to stretch now and open your eyes 
and we'll continue the work and worship of the day. Thank you. I'll share with you now some slides. Here's this inspiring work by Caspar David Friedrich, the German 19th century romantic painter, often translated from the German title as the wanderer above the sea of fog or the sea of mist. Just like we ascend to the heights of the celestial sanctum, we see here a person who's risen up to a high point on a mountain and is looking down on the clouds or the mist below, just as we exerted our work. But when we reach that high point, we also then can worship the divine that expresses itself through the works of the creator here on the temple of the earth. And also draws us into higher and more lofty thoughts that can help guide us in our life and our mission. Another inspiring work of art by a, tradi by a traditional Rosicrucian uh, painter, Nicomendus Gomez, that I've shown you before, is this tri-pitch on life, light, and love. It's a very inspiring work. He painted these over some years in the 1970s, but all had the conception that they would form one great work. In a way, we see depicted before us visually an inspired way the true meaning of work and worship, which we'll soon elaborate on and their definitions. But you'll see on the right, they are a home sanctum with the two candles, which Rosicrucians study in their, their home, their mini temple or micro temple in their home. And you'll even see the book in the lower right there, Liber 777, that we applied to ascend to the heights of the celestial sanctum. And you see rising up with the, with the, the towards the grail and the dove descending. As we rise up, these great and harmonious spiritual forces are drawn into us. For in a way, it's a matter of, of inner attunement, um, but the uh, conception for the outer mind helps it to think of the ri rising up. You can also think of it as refocalization or attunement, just like in a radio where you can turn a dial to tune on different frequencies. So in meditation, we turn the dial within us because like the holy temple and its psychic nature is like a wonderful instrument like unto a radio. We can attune with higher and higher rates of vibration. You'll see in the center, something many of you will recognize is an altar of a Rosicrucian temple. And above it is the Shekinah or the presence of God in our midst, where we do our work and worship as Rosicrucians. Uh, when we meet at a temple or a lodge, Above is rising up into the uh, place of the ma master within, the divine within, emblematic here of the master Yeheshua, the master Jesus. And again, the great radiations of light, just as we radiated love and well-being when we did our work of the silent council in conjunction with the council of Solus. You'll see off to the sides, there's many, many people growing in understanding and realization. And the color scheme there has to do in a way with the color of the aura that radiates out from the human being when the two polarities of the holy temple, spirit energy, physical energy, and the inner divine energy come together. There's a great radiation of light. Just as human beings evolve and mature, emblematic of the different colors, there's a spiritualization of the human nature moving toward the apex at the center and the realization of the consciousness of the cosmic or the universe intelligence. Not only is it an abstract thought and philosophy, but an actual liberating wonderful experience that is unforgettable. And we'll see on the far left here, continue to think about work and worship, the different spheres of worship that take place in our home sanctum on the right, but here in the temple or the built form, but also here throughout the cosmos, work and worship take place just like we did in our celestial sanctum exercise. We see the cosmic keyboard in the lower part here, all the rates of vibration, but also the great temple of the earth rising up into the temple of the cosmos the divine temple. And you see the angelic wings as we spiritualize, forming a cross here with the eye at the center, emblematic and similar to the great rosy cross, where the two polarities come together, the ascent and the descent, the infinite and the finite, and the realization of the all-seeing eye, or the beautiful rose or the unfolding characteristics, all wonderfully emblematic to us here the inspired work and cosmic attunement of Nicomendus Gomez. Let us go in more detail now on the definition of work and its special meaning to Rosicrucians. Its meaning is partly overlaps with what we're used to in the English language, but also we'll see that it has some added 
meaning. First, I'll read it and then comment more on it. And this will be a review, I know, for many of us. But there, as we grow mature, we also see more and more in things that inspire in nature from our order. Now, it indicates here that the, uh, whoops, do this a moment, work. The work of the order consists of studying, testing, and teaching such laws of God or divine in nature as will make our members masters of the holy temple, the physical body, and workers in a divine laboratory, nature's domains. This enables us to render more efficient help to those who do not know and who need or require help and assistance. Each initiate has an obligation to serve, make it an imperative to study and practice the laws taught in our order and to apply them at every opportune time. Let's go back over it because in many ways, when we ascend to the heights of the celestial sanctum, we applied all this. For example, you know, it mentions the work consists in, in studying and testing. And teaching such laws of the divine and nature will make, make us masters in the holy temple. That's their physical body. We're not here to damn the physical body. It's, an, it's a work of the creator. It has many high and holy lessons in it, just like in nature does a, a beautiful view of the mist and the mountains that Caspar David Friedrich depicting his. You notice that the work is in studying. We're constantly a student as a Rosicrucian or constantly a student as a mystic evolving. Testing, not only taking, not just taking others' words, even though they're very knowledgeable or very wise, become more real for us as we test and we move them from belief to into knowing. And when we apply things with compassion, guided by our conscience and the divine within, then we're more able to do those things in a harmonious way and teach those things for others. And when we teach them and help others draw to apply them in our lives, then we get the full understanding as well. It goes beyond the understanding we had just from testing it. You note too that there's two many temples we're involved with. One is the temple of our body, but there's a divine laboratory of the cosmos depicted in uh, Nicomendes Gomez's work. But the divine laboratory is also a way the temple of the divine or the temple of God. We have this interlocking connections of the temple that make living in this world highly meaningful. This is the arena that we were incarnated in, in an auspicious state to undertake our lessons to evolve and grow over incarnations. I know often people will think, well, passing of a decade or 20 years is a long time, but more from this work and worship perspective, that's a very brief time when we think of a thousands of years, millennium and aeons as, as we grow and mature. And this allows us to see things in a much greater perspective in our lifetimes. And it's mentioning that this enables us to render more efficient help to those who do not know or need or require help and assistance. This is why we have these uplifting experiences, not to show they're not an end in themselves, but to increase our capacity to be of service, to use those God-given strengths of reasoning and and imagination and creativity to be of service to others. And then when we do well by others, we do well by ourselves. Each initiate has an obligation to serve. This is an important part of the initiations in our order. But as we want to grow and as we've been given, we need to give back, making an imperative, a very strong word to study. That's why as a Rosicrucian student, it's good to be a good student in general, to, to really enjoy, always be on the lookout for lessons that are always around us and are in your contact with people, when we see things in nature, every day is full of lessons. We can grow and this helps us grow and rise up in the mountain, the mountain in, a, in a more direct ascent and be of greater service to others in that way. These are laws taught in our order, but our order also is constantly looking for new laws and development in science and other disciplines. And it also says to apply them at every opportune time. I know many of you are thinking of your first degree initiation here that this is part of an obligation. We take in this knowledge to grow and learn, but it's for a purpose to be able to serve, to give back, to increase the tomb of the cosmic, not only for ourselves, but others. We'll continue, but keep this definition in mind, but see a parallel meaning with a definition for uh, 
worship. Which here says a process by which the soul personality of the human becomes consciously aware of its oneness with that of the divine. It gives us a realization of our part in the great scheme of all that is. Worship, never an end in itself, should be the evidence of our desire to bring ourselves to a higher plane of realization of the ideal worshiped. Worship is essentially a process or condition which exists within, the, within us, or within the human. While certain physical aids are valuable in creating a favorable environment, real worship must be carried on within the sanctum of our own being. Let's go over this a little more and then we'll continue. Now, a process by which the soul personality of the human being becomes consciously aware. You see what's evolving over incarnations or what's evolving within us is what's referred to as our soul personality. Soul personality of the Rosicrucian is like a mirror that's, um, and that it reflects the light of the cosmic, the universal intelligence. And as we grow and mature, we are actually polishing that mirror. So our outer nature and, the our, and our holy temple increasingly reflects the divine. That's why seeing a person particularly as mature is very inspiring. They radiate love and well-being. They have an uplifting way of seeing because their mirror, which is their soul personality, has been well polished. And that divine light, the invisible sun, is radiating out through them. But for us to be aware of that, we have had, needed to do some of that work uh, and worship ourselves. Notice too, and a very important point is that worship gives us a realization of our part in the great scheme of things. That's why worship is so profoundly meaningful. We have a great sense of well being. It helps deal with anxiety and depression because it instills a great sense of well being, a great sense of meaning and purpose and motivation to work. Now, it also mentions here about worship is never an end in itself. Go see, we have these powerful, uplifting experiences, which are great signs of our, our worship and communion, yes. But they're not an end in themselves. We have to come back down from the mountain, just like the Master Yahushua or Master Jesus came down from Mount Tabor after the transfiguration. He pointed his, his disciples wanted to continue the uplifting experience, but he pointed to, no, we must apply it. We must emulate the cosmic. That's part of our purpose in living. And notice too that realization of the ideal worship, i.e. the divine within. Worship is essentially a process or condition which exists within us. It's always there operative within us. And while physical aids like entering a temple or having a sanctum, they're valuable, they're useful, uh, incense, they're all valuable to have. Their purpose is to create a favorable environment so that real worship can take place within ourselves, not outwardly. And we carried on with this, with the sanctum of our own being. You know, all to other temples in a way are emblematic and to remind us of that sanctum of our own being. And then we can understand them in life more generally as well. Now, another very important word I want to mention in this is harmonium. All these words I'll give you to are in the Rosicrucian Dictionary. I'll give you a resource to look those up. But you can also make up your own Rosicrucian dictionary for part of your notes or your weekly lessons. Harmonium is a state of harmony. The, the metaphysical meaning whoops, just a moment. Um, when applied to the relationship of humans is unity of thought, agreement of purpose, the direct communion or kinship of souls as applied to the relationship of the cosmic to the human soul. It means that state of ecstasy where humans become conscious of attunement of natural forces, of the natural forces of their being with the absolute or the, or the source from which they emanate. Within the individual, harmonium includes health, rhythm, coordination of action in all parts plus the properly balanced relationship between the psychic and objective faculties. You see here what's expressed here in harmonium, and I'll relate it soon to work and worship, is harmony in all senses 
of our being or all levels of our being. It's a very beautiful and profound experience. It's close. Part of its experience is what Rosicrucians refer to, as I mentioned earlier, peace profound, a deep sense of well-being. When we attune with the cosmic at the heights of the celestial sanctum, we went deep within ourselves and the divine within declared itself. And we had a tremendous sense of harmony that then floods out for the rest of our day. Part of the value of keep coming back to the meditative experience on a daily basis and doing at least an hour of meditation overall each day is to move more and more into that state of harmonium, not only the period of meditation, but throughout our day for the well-being of ourselves and others. And then our all our faculties, both physical and non-physical, be working together. And we're much more able to discharge our duties and do what's right and needed, often to the surprise of the outer nature. Our outer nature needs to work as a co-agent or co-partner with the cosmic and the divine within, our true guide. Our outer nature cannot guide us through life. It's our inner divine master within our true nature. And as the outer nature becomes increasingly identified with it, just like a sponge is soaking up wa waters, as the outer nature increasingly soaks up in intimations from the divine, divine within and aligns itself more to listening to the divine within and convey impressions to the divine within, we come more into that state of harmonium. Now, to link things together, what we've been talking about, the Rosicrucians have what they refer to as the law of perfection, or the law of the triangle, or the law of manifestation, or some of its names. At one polarity, just like you can have the uh, north, sole of a, a mag north pole of a magnet, is their work, as we've defined it. They also can bring together worship as the other pole, like the other pole of the magnet. When they're brought together in a perfect fashion, then harmonium is created or manifested within our lives and around us and all those different levels of our being. The harmonious actions, the flow within our body and the, and the operations of the different uh, systems such as the nervous system, the autoimmune uh, system, the respiratory uh, system, the circulatory system, but also the harmony of relationship with people in our lives and persons we meet at work, at home, in our family, in our environment but also a sense of har harmony uh, with our environment, how we're creating it and making it more conducive to suggest the cosmic. And then also a harmony with the deepest part of our nature, which is our birthright, our rapture, our ecstasy. Now these things sound surprising, but often when we go through the trials and tribulations of our lives, like an alchemical transmutation will enter into that great upliftment and realize in a way what a child we've been, being stressed by all these things, because now we see the deeper meaning and purpose, and we embrace them as their value for us. And we take a great step forward in growing up. We not only become adults, it's true around 18, but there's a much greater growing up to be done continually through our life. So it's often good to keep in mind here, work and worship, when they come together, they form that deep harmony in our lives, that state they increasingly move towards the road quasi state or that enlightened state. Now I want to mention a few more things about work and worship and pertain to harmonium. One thing that's very helpful to keep in mind is that work and worship constitute a profoundly meaningful way of life. In fact, it is the way of life. Each person participates continually in work and, wor work and worship in some form or other, whether we know it or not. Work and worship are what it is to be a human being. They are the fundamental activities and ways of being for us. A person may say, I'm not worshiping in any way, I'm not worshiping anything divine, for example. But in closer examination, I think we'll find that they are worshiping something. It may be finances or movie stars or pop musicians, sports figures or youth and models and all sorts of material luxuries, the intellect or different forms of power or an outer conception of God or divine and many other things. Or they may be worshiping the divine within. 
Now, work and worship take place at all times, wherever we go and wherever or whoever we are with. Our work can be directed to take advantage of others or without thought of the consequences for others nearby or afar on the other side of the temple of the earth. That is not heeding conscience and social conscience, which is part of conscience. Or the work of, or the work can be the coming into greater understanding and service. That is heeding conscience and within that social conscience. The resulting manifestation or lack of manifestation at the third point, that is the degree of harmonium in the triangle, will depend on the quality and the integrity of our work and our worship. The laws and principles of life and existence are always operating around us and within us. It is up to us to work to reveal them to us. Nature is not hiding them from us. It is our need to work. <clears throat> that is, observe closely, purify our ways of perceiving, and be receptive and attentive to make plain the, this constructive operation of laws. Worship helps us to have the motivation, the inspiration, enthusiasm, and deep sense of purpose to explore, to undertake such work, which may at times seem arduous to the outer self, but not when the inner self is worked with. Now, an important part of work and worship is changing our habits that are laws of the subconscious mind. If those habits are not healthy and harmonious, if we have experienced trauma or taking on suggestions earlier in our life that are causing us an anxiety or an and suffering, these matters need to be explored, faced, and transformed. The alchemical transmutation, such as lead into gold, the phoenix rising from the ashes, or the spirit of knighthood and the slain of the dragon are symbolic expressions of this process of healing to help realize us wholeness. As we work with these symbolic systems, they'll help us in this process which is not to be avoided, because if we avoid it, it will only add strength to those anxieties and suffering and tend to keep throwing us out into outer nature, not into the, our whole nature, it works with the outer self. In this, the weekly lessons and laws and principles taught by the Rosicrucian Order are invaluable and can be applied through our imagination and creativity and suggestions in the Rosicrucian form and in the monographs. It's also helpful to have some knowledge of psychology to assist in this process. In fact, notably, many early mystics were forerunners of modern psychologists in the astute observation of human habits and behaviors in themselves and in their students. Befittingly, psych, psych means the human soul, spirit, and or mind, and thereby psychology would be implied to include the study of the soul when taken up fully. Part of our work and worship is to be on the lookout for where we can be of greatest service. Our outer self alone cannot handle such a demanding way of life with its finite resources unless it works with the cosmic and its infinite resources as a co-partner. This approach, approach is exacting. Any impurities or foolishness on our part will be drawn increasingly to our attention as we progress. Our failings will become more quickly and intensely apparent to us. The outer self alone cannot withstand such intense work. However, the outer self and inner self working together can handle these matters with ease and the latter is far deeper and far more knowing than the outer mind and even the subconscious mind. One of the special aspects of work for us too is that each of us can reach others that others cannot readily reach. For example, think of this inspiring story of the August master, Louis Claude de Saint-Martin, a traditional Rosicrucian. 
he realized that he did not need to give up his various riches because by being an aristocrat and moving in aristocratic circles, he was able to reach many above the various higher and deeper teachings of life that others couldn't readily reach. For example, you may have a particular profession that others don't particularly often see or, or have an opportunity to speak with. Or there may be a cultural background that you have that many others aren't in contact with. You, through that means, will have a special way to do work and worship of the order and service. You know, our outer nature will often say things like, I'm not good at that, or I've never done that before, or this challenge is different from anything I've ever faced before. But we have to use our imagination our creativity and ingenuity. And they were given to us not to squirm out of taking responsibility. They were given to us to be a co-creator with the divine, to rise to the challenge and grow up. In this manner, we become into the full understanding of what it is for us to be in the image of the divine. The outer self is greatly in need of the guidance from the inner self. The outer self needs this guidance. Always has been and always will be. When the outer self surrenders to the divine within, the greatest strength and compassion is known, and we are greatly at home once again, as depicted in this inspiring work by Nicomendes Gomez. Important experiences in worship transform us. So at challenging times in our lives, we, we can be remembered of them to help realign us to mature perspective and draw us forward on the mystical path. We'll conclude our presentation shortly. I want you to keep in mind that today we've explored various Rosicrucian principles and we will continue to do so for the development of self-mastery. Well, Karen paste into the chat some resources for you. Let us keep in mind that we've considered the highly meaningful and central activities of work and worship and how they give rise to harmonium for the great well-being of ourselves and all others in service. And thank you so much again for being with us.